Hey everyone, Tony Winston here. I've got a request to do a John Coltrane, Johnny Hartman song, originally done uh, by Doris Day, maybe some other people even before her, and it's called "They Say It's Wonderful." And you know, it's a song that I've I've heard, but it wasn't really on my radar. So uh, I thank the person who suggested this song, and I've got a chart that came out of the old real book, real book number three. Of course, that chart's going to be down in the description. I'm going to play through it real quickly for the very first time right now. Right, and now I'm going to hook my phone up to the Bluetooth and listen to Johnny Hartman and John Coltrane, and I'll be back with you in a minute. So yeah, McCoy Tyner, um, great piano player, and I'm not sure when they recorded this album, but I believe they had already done a lot of that crazy stuff that, uh, you know, John Coltrane, of course, is known for, you know, Love Supreme and all that kind of thing. And here's McCoy playing without any of those fourth voicings or any, he's just playing, you know, standard cocktail piano, and of course he sounds great. And there's several albums that he's done, uh, you know, McCoy Tyner with strings. Um, his very first couple of albums, you know, he's, he's, you know, just playing, you know, great jazz piano. And you can hear a little bit of the, uh, the innovations that he was famous for in the music, but uh, not a whole lot. So, and here he's really just left all that behind and he's going back to his roots here of just good old jazz piano. So my chart is uh, up a whole step from that. Um, so we're gonna use my chart. And I've made a few changes on it. And uh, you know, you can print out the chart cause it's down there in the description, but the changes, you know, uh, the things on the, on the uh, John Coltrane version, the changes in the harmony, you'll have to get from, you know, my little uh, diagrams up here. So anyway, we're starting off with G minor. We're just flatting the five there. And I should talk a little bit about the A minor, the A flat. You know, this is a chord progression I've been going over many, many times here recently. So a, a new chord I've just discovered, and I think I've done a video about it already is to use the Barry Harris idea of, of taking the diminished chord and then thinking about all the triads that can go with it, like a D-flat triad is one of them. I guess the E would be another one, a G would be one, and B-flat would be one. Doesn't work too well in this case. Um, 
So you could take those triads, and I'm going to take the D-flat one right here, and then go to G minor. But my left hand, I'm going to do something wrong. I'm going to play the seventh instead of the sixth. So it's no longer really a diminished chord, but check it out. It's a legal chord. It's a, like an A-flat minor seventh. There's A-flat minor. Minor 7th with an 11 and a 13 stuck in a kind of a weird place here. But how did I come up with this chord? I could have come up with it just using, you know, the idea of a Berklee College of Music chord formulas and played a minor 7th chord here, reharmonizing it to A flat minor 7th. All right, there it is. Adding the 11th, adding the 13, doubling the root. But that's not how I came up with the chord. I came up with it by thinking about Barry Harris's uh, conception of the, the four triads that go with any diminished chord. All right? Those triads, and you can take each one of those triads and make it a seventh chord or make it a sixth chord because all those notes are going to work. Using the D flat triad. Of course, you can add the seventh, but you could add the sixth too. A minor, and we're doing the diminished, all right? But we're adding the, the triad and the sixth, all right? Gotta be a legal chord, it's pretty close, but. It's got to be okay, you know. I don't know if you all can hear that, but to my ears, it sounds right. It's thick, it's dissonant, but it sounds right. It doesn't sound wrong. ideas maybe move it up like this and then keep the C on the bottom and do the do the chord up on top there so you have a pedal tone and then they kind of go to like a E flat seventh and a D seventh um, but you know it doesn't really fit the melody but he doesn't hold the melody that long he just kind of goes up and then you can hear the band not doing anything like that. More uh, the way McCoy plays on this is kind of like you know he's he's using lots of inversions of the chord, lots of thirds and things like that. So we'll take the second eight again. So instead of the C minor, just F major. And then change it to F7. Anytime, uh, you, whatever key you're in, if you go to the two chord or to the flat seventh chord, it's almost always, you know, uh, what they call an unaltered dominant, but it is kind of a little bit altered. Use the, uh, use this trick. Put a triad a step above and you'll get the, a, a good harmony there, especially like on the flat seventh chord. The step above is the key of the song, so it's going to sound good. And here, uh, they just go back to F again.
kind of a quick change here. A two, five, one there, so it's B minor, seven flat five to E, and then. And this is nice. So from three, six, it's very typical. Flat three, flat six to the two. Now there's a two chord, but it's it's not a dominant, so you know you can't you can't add that A triad or anything to it. Um, I don't think we have a two dominant in this song, so. They just have F and maybe an E flat here to a D. It is a wonderful song and it uh, reminds me that, you know, maybe I should cover Lush Life. Anybody out there? want an in-depth analysis of lush life. I used to sing this song. I don't know if I could still do it. I used to visit all those very gay places, those come what may places, where one relaxes on the axis of the wheel of life to get the feel of life. Jazz and cocktails. <laughs> it's a fun song and uh, pretty amazing that it was written by somebody so young. Uh, Billy Strayhorn, I believe, wrote it when he was like a teenager or something. So anyhow, see you all soon. Uh, keep the cards and letters coming. And of course, all those requests are very helpful to me. You know, keep going here on YouTube and I do appreciate it. Thank you to all my Patreon subscribers and uh, everybody else who contributes to the channel in one way or the other. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon.